Yes, uh, what we're going to be doing this morning is the demonstration of the physical intervention techniques. And I'm going to be taking you through 11 of the techniques. The techniques you can use to protect yourself and protect others. The techniques you can use to disengage from harmful contact and the techniques you can use to separate someone from a trigger that can lead to a cause of event. If you remember from your previous uh, uh, classes, I told you that physical intervention is to be used as a last Result when you have exhausted every other options. Normally use it to protect yourself and use it to protect others. In any case, whenever you are using physical intervention, you should lose a low level force so that you don't end up hurting the people you are hired to protect. So this morning, we are going to be going through all these 11 techniques. In the United Kingdom, we have over 24 different techniques. But I've selected these techniques so that you can easily understand them and know how to use them. All right? For these techniques, you're going to need some tools. I have identified three tools, key tools. One of them is the claw. Claw. Can we do this? Claw. Claw. All the fingers together, yeah? And the thumb stays separately. The claw. Now, you use this claw to hold someone instead of grabbing them. When you grab someone, like Thomas, who have a light skin, yes, you might leave him with bruises. So, you use your claw to hold him. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So when you're using your claw, you're not exerting any force. So at every point in time, you need to use your claw. The second tool is your tripod, which is your normal standing position. As a security operative, your standing position should be like this. If you stand in this manner, you are more stable. It's much more better when you stand like this. If you stand like this, someone can just push you and you're out there. Please come. Stand like this. Can you see that? Okay, now stand as it. You can see the difference? Thank you. So when you stand like that, you are more stable on the ground. So it's going to be difficult for anybody to just push you. The last one is your fish tail. Fish tail. Fish tail. All the time, fish tail. Thumb together with all the fingers. Fish tail. Fish tail. So if someone is grabbing your wrist, 
Yes? Before you disengage, you do fish tail. When the fish is swimming, the tail is like this. Fish tail. Then you go over the tongue. You go over the tongue. Whatever the position of the tongue, you go over the tongue all the time. The tongue is the weakest of all the fingers. So at every point in time, you go over the tongue. All right. The first technique is going to be finger pointing. Finger pointing. If you have a customer or an aggressor, or an aggressive customer. Yes? Coming towards you and pointing at you. Under normal circumstances, what do you do? You're not supposed to go towards him. You have to step back, right? So I'm going to demonstrate that. Go back a little bit. Okay? Finger pointing. Yes? You can see that? I cannot go this way, can I? Okay. So what do I do? Step up! You can see my two hands, and you can see my open palms, and you can see my knee. I'm bending my knee so that if he wants to hit me on the knee, yes, my knee is going to be like kind of resistance. Can you see that? Yes. All right. I'll do it again. Step up. Can you see my tongue with the fingers all together and my knee bent? Is that clear? Yes, sir. The next one is <coughs> single cross wrist grab. Single cross wrist grab. Crossed. Cross. The hands are crossed. Yes? You're grabbing my wrist gently. Yeah? Now, you position your hand like this. If you cannot see very well, you can come this side. Yes? You position your hand. Can you see that? Yes. Then, before you disengage, fish tail. This is the thumb here. So, I'm going over the thumb. Fish tail. Over the thumb. Yes? And, step up. I'll do that again. Fish tail over the top. Step back. The next one is single parallel wrist grab. Single parallel wrist grab. Parallel. Yes? yes. The two hands are parallel. Can you see? Again, see the position of my hand? Yes. Yes? What do I do? Fish tail. Fish tail. Yes? Over the top. And step back. <coughs> Can you see that, guys? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. The next one is double parallel. See my hand again? Double parallel. Fish tail, open book. You can see my palms are open. Yeah. And you do what? Yeah. Step back. I'll do that again. Fish tail, open book. Open book. Okay. Step back. The next one is. Double shoulder grab. <coughs> you need to be careful for this because it might have nails. So you use your claw onto the wrist. Yes? Move forward. Put them together. 
push gently and step up. The step back is to give a warning. Step back. All right? I'll do that again. The claw to the wrist. Move forward. Put together. Push a little. Step back. Does it need to be from the side or can it be from under? No, from the side. From the side. Yep. All right. The next one is double clothing grab. Yep. This is like a snake sign. Which of the hand, whichever you are using, you come over the hand closest to you, come underneath the wrist. You can see how it's bending. You join the other hand to it, flat and push. Gently. Yes? yes? Step back! I'll do that again. Using the other hand. Come over this. To the wrist. Push. Gently. Step back! The next one is single clothing grab. The closest hand to it, yes, yes, use that, distract, it doesn't know what you want to do, use your claw to the wrist, right, push and step back, I'll do that again. <coughs> Use the closest hand to the spot. Use your claw to the wrist. Push gently. Step back. Then the next one is single. I mean, um, restricted, agitated, or restriction agitated. Chair restraint. Yes. If someone is drunk, for instance, and you have arrested the person, you are waiting the police to come and get the person, maybe he has committed an offense. Yeah? This is what you call sheer restraint. You put your knee to the back of the seat, put your two palms to the chest. Yes? Make effort to leave. Can you see that? All right. Now, you need to understand that you cannot use this for someone who is likely to assault you. Right? Okay. The next one is single escort compliant. The word compliant there means the person is in agreement, is cooperating with you. Yes? If you ask him to fly, he will fly. Jump, he will jump. Sit down. So you normally use these techniques for someone who is probably drunk and he's just going all over the places, disturbing other people, and you need to take him out. Yeah? So because it's a complaint, yeah? You hold the tricep. Yes? Don't grab. Use your claw to the tricep. The other hand. Yes, use that to show direction and talk to him. Let's go. You've had so much drink today. Yes, let's go. We'll see you tomorrow, yeah? Go and have a good sleep at home. Yes. All right. Now, that is that. Now, we have the two other techniques, which is double escort on steady down the stairs and up the stairs. You will normally use this when you are supporting someone who is unsteady. The person might be unsteady as a result of sickness or as a result of uh, alcohol. Maybe the person is drunk and he needs to go home and he's going to go, he needs to go through the stairs, yet you need to support them. Don't forget duty of care at all the time. It is a moral and a legal <coughs> obligation, a responsibility for us to do to make sure 
the health and safety and welfare of others. We need to ensure that. Yes, irrespective of what their position is, what they have done, what offense they have committed, duty of care is our responsibility. Duty of care is a moral and a legal responsibility. We need to ensure the health and safety and welfare of others. All right? So, now, if you're taking them, either supporting them to go down the stairs, yes, you put your hand underneath the armpit and to your chest. This is usually done by two operatives. Can I have another person there? All right? Now, this way. If you're on the side of the handrail, I will go hold the handrail to support myself. And if you're on the side of the wall, you do your hand like this. Yes, to support yourself with the wall. And we go one step at a time. One step at a time. And we check on the person, making sure it's okay, everything is alright with them. Yes, there's no need to be in a rush. You do it one step at a time. Alright? The same thing when you are coming up, you do the same thing. Right? Is that okay? 